Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Coronavirus and Our Mental Health. Today is January 4th, 2023. And Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa on the north shore of Oahu. And it's a rainy day. I hope it's uh, you're not too wet and you're staying dry. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, speaking of rain, we're going to talk about a dark, lingering cloud. Uh, and we're going to take a look at uh, the last three years of the coronavirus and where it's taken us uh, and how we've dealt with it. So without any further ado, why don't we get started? Okay. A dark cloud. Well, it caught us by surprise, that was for sure. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, some statistics uh, and then some ideas. Uh, and I've got slides to do that, and I hope you Hope they won't be too boring. I don't think they will be. I've tried to keep them short. And I'm going to try to explain to you the variations that are happening with the, uh, the data and what it all means. So let's go ahead and start with that first slide. Now, one of the things you'll notice about this first slide is that the data starts not at January 1st, 2020. It starts in April. Although we first got wind of the coronavirus in December, of 2019, we didn't declare it a pandemic until March of 2020. And the first data that really started rolling in was in April. And what we're taking a look at is the seven day average of daily new cases. So how many new cases came up every single day during these time periods? Uh, and you can see on the left, the April 2020, that first time through with our new statistics, about 31,000. Now, it jumps up when we go to the big spike time, which is the holiday time, really runs from uh, early December and late November on through January, almost up to February. Uh, and you can see from the statistics coming in in January 2021, that 31,000 jumped to 248,000 new cases per day, which was phenomenal. Now, during the year, as we tried to get ahead of COVID, you can see that those new cases came down a little bit, but then we got to the big jump, and the big jump was last January, a year ago, January 2022, where we jumped up to over 800,000 new cases a day. Uh, now, this was due to the, and I've talked about this uh, a lot during the previous shows, is that Omicron variants, uh, beta-5 and beta-4, uh, these were very, very infectious. Uh, variants of the Omicron. So you can see that is the cause for that big jump under 800, 800,000. Now, if you go back to the slide, you'll take a look at where we are now. And this is from January 3rd, yesterday, 2023. And by the way, all these number statistics are coming from the New York Times, which has been my go-to for the, uh, along with the various uh, World Health Organizations, Department of Health, et cetera, uh, and CDC and so on. But the New York Times has been the one that I've been taking most of my numbers from. Uh, so that was a great drop, and that's uh, cause for some real uh, celebration so far. Uh, but we still got a way to go because those the data is still coming in. You know, when we're in the middle of a holiday, when we're in the middle of this spike period, a lot of times things get delayed. A lot of people are off. Uh, a lot of people are scrambling to you know, deal with new problems and uh, especially the triple uh, pandemic that we're looking at or the triple uh, threat that's coming up. And I'll talk about that later when we add not only, uh, we can talk about not only COVID, but we talk about the flu and we talk about RSV. Uh, and we'll do that toward the end of the show. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Now the next slide is hospitalized patients. And you see basically the same thing. Starts off at 64,000 uh, patient people in hospitals, uh, and it jumps up in the uh, in the spike area of the uh, the new year, up to 40, 142,000. Goes down, uh, you know, to sort of what we call sort of the fall spike, uh, and then uh, we got the big spike, but it's not quite as big as the new cases. Uh, 161,000, we're doing better. And again, taking a look at January 3rd, yesterday, we're way down. 
we're at our lowest level as far as hospitalizations. But here's the caveat. Before we leave this slide, the caveat is that there's that's still a lot of people in the hospital system that are in there because of COVID. And all those COVID beds that are being taken up by the people who need them, of course, are taking away beds from people who have other problems. And believe me, there's a lot of other problems as well. So it's still a great strain on both the hospitals and all the health givers, caregivers that work there. Uh, so it may look small, but it's still significant. And uh, we still have work to go on that. Okay, let's take a look at the third slide. Now, the third slide is the deaths. Now, this is the seven-day average of COVID deaths. And here's where there's a big difference between this and the first two slides that I showed you. Yes, we start off in April with over 2,000 uh, deaths a day. It goes up during that spike period uh, and comes down. But in that uh, February period, uh, that's that uh, sort of the uh, holiday period. Uh, actually, that statistic is from uh, February 1st. So you can almost really call it in the January 2022. It's not as big as the other two slides. So the big big spike was the, the previous year in January 2021. And again, when we take a look at that last figure, the figure from yesterday, we're way down. And that's the great thing. Because the other thing about the Omicron variants is they not only are highly infectious, but they're less lethal. So more people getting sick, but less people dying. And that's, well, that's got its pluses and its minuses, obviously. And uh, so we're very happy about the deaths going down, uh, but we're very concerned because people are still getting sick. And people are not only getting sick with COVID, but it's affecting all the other diseases as well. Not only the fact that the other diseases are have less beds to occupy, but they also interact with COVID a lot. And we've got long COVID, which you've heard about before. So, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, let's go to the big slide, which is the next one. This is the total deaths in the US for three years. And that's what we're looking at three years. And this runs from 2020, 2021, and through 2022. And you can see, major, major drop in the deaths uh, in 2022. Now, it's still a lot, as you can tell, 240,000 people in this country dying from COVID. But compared to that 460,000 from last year, it's some major progress. So <clears throat> not only uh, is the variance that we're dealing with less uh, lethal, but we have more tools to work with. Big thing that worries me when we take a look at this slide again next year, and I'll probably be back to you again in January of 2024, taking a look at four years of COVID, because COVID is declining, but it's not going away. And that's what we have to realize. But hopefully next year we'll see it even much further down. I'm Some experts are thinking we'll be down to 200,000. Some are thinking more optimistically that we'll be down to 100,000. Uh, during this next year. Still way too many, but a lot of progress. Now, why aren't we making more progress? Because we're no longer using our major tools, and we'll need to, to take a look about at that. Next slide, please. Okay, now here we're going to switch from the New York Times to the World Health Organization. And this was what came out uh, this past week with the World Health Organization. And Here's where they started off. They said, and I'll read to you from the slide, we are hopeful, and hopeful is a critical word there, that at some point in 2023, COVID-19 will no longer be a global health emergency. Now, emergency is the other critical word here, because what the WHO, or the World Health Organization, goes on to say is that, well, it might not be an emergency, it will continue to be a problem. So, if you're thinking this year and we do uh, get away from that emergency uh, designation, there'll be a problem. It will be, it will be a global health problem. And that's what we're going to have to wrestle with this next year. And it's not going to be easy, believe me. Okay, let's uh, go on to the next slide. Now, here's the reason for hope. You know, you need some hope. Let's take a look at this. And you can see from that first uh, little uh, bit that we got from the World Health Organization, 90% of 
of the global population have some level of immunity, either through vaccination or through previous illness. Uh, so the antibodies build up. Uh, and so that's good, especially for the developing countries who haven't had as much access to vaccines as the developing countries have. So, um, you know, that gives us a lot of hope there. Now let's take a look at that second one underneath there. Okay, the weekly death toll, and we saw that on the last slide, is down significantly. Uh, and it's mostly involved with people who are not vaccinated. Now, there's a lot been a lot of misinformation come out uh, during the past three years. A lot of people are putting out and saying, oh, we don't really have a problem. Uh, it's no big deal. Uh, this is government that's uh, putting one over on us, et cetera, et cetera. Well, these statistics that we just saw, they are not exact statistics in that there is so much variation in the collection. There is so much variation in the interpretation. Uh, it is very difficult to get a final number for any of those. But the key to those statistics that we've just taken a look at is the trend. And we can see the trend that's happening, uh, especially that last so last number slide that we took a look at, where over a million people in this country had died. Uh, now, there is no way that people can fake over a million death certificates. Uh, and believe me, when I talk about these statistics, when I talk about we have problems with them, the problems are in underestimating the example, not overestimating, but underestimating. Uh, it's so very difficult at times to tease uh, COVID uh, deaths, for instance, away from other problems because they're also affecting the persons who are vulnerable. That's the other big population in addition to uh, the people who are unvaccinated. It's the people who are at risk. And those are elderly people. And those are people with a previous uh, physical condition. And so when they come in, and if they pass away in our hospitals, sometimes it's very difficult to say, well, this is a COVID death, or this is a death from respiratory illness or cancer or whatever, uh, because there's a lot of interactions there. So. Uh, while the data may be a little soft, that's what my uh, graduate school professors would say when I turned in my dissertation and saying, well, you know, this is not exactly hard data here. Uh, yeah, that's true. But the trends are very clear. After three years, there is no doubt about the damage that it has done to the people in this country and the people in the world. Uh, there is no disputing that. And if you're listening to people or you're talking to people who say, oh, no, this is not the case, uh, you know, you better, uh, well, you can't try to convince them. These are people who are not being convinced no matter what the statistics say, no matter what proof that we show them. Uh, but don't fall into that trap. This is a very serious problem, and it's continuing to be a very serious problem. And uh, we're seeing the good trends and we're also seeing the trends that we need to deal with uh, this year. So uh, be very sure about that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, that, well, those are the reasons for hope. Uh, let's talk about the concerns, okay? And there are four major uh, concern areas that I wanna talk about. First of all, and this is one that you really have to understand uh, if you're going to try to eradicate a virus, say, for instance, like we eradicated, quote, smallpox, uh, you have to be able to identify those people who have it. And the major problem that we've been facing with COVID for three years is that some people don't show any symptoms. They have COVID, but they don't show any symptoms. So they don't get treated. They don't go to the hospital. They're not tested or they avoid testing. Uh, and what happens is they have it and their body is effectively fighting off the COVID apparently, but they're in the stage of giving it to other people. And that's the real danger. And that's why COVID hangs around uh, because we're passing it back and forth and back and forth. So this is very, very important to understand. 
Uh, now, the other concern, let's go back to the slide, the second concern on that slide, is uh, that what I just talked about, the no symptoms. Um, so uh, how are we going to do with that? Uh, let's take a look at the next slide. Okay. We'll come to the dealing with it in a second, but let me let me go to some of the other reasons in addition to that being invisible. Uh, let's talk about animals. <clears throat> Now, when it first came out, we suspected that animals had passed it on to human beings. Uh, and the bat uh, became the prime suspect, uh, getting COVID passed from a bat, uh, which is too bad because I really like bats. I was a real fan of Batman when I was growing up. So, and I still think he has lots of people to, uh, to look at. <laughs> We're still looking at them, but there are a lot of other animals that are now coming up and we're seeing that have COVID as well. Now, what happens is we're so overwhelmed trying to deal with the human beings who have COVID. We are certainly not prepared to try to uh, help the animals who have got COVID and deal with the problems associated with them, making them better and less uh, <clears throat> infectious. Uh, so what happens is COVID feeds on itself. If it's going, you know, if it's in a population where it can keep feeding things back and forth, like human beings passing it to one another, animals are also doing the same thing. And if you don't intervene, the COVID gets worse. It gets bigger. The problem gets bigger. So when we try to deal with something like the animal population, and maybe we find something that can help with bats, uh, and we're trying to deal with them, well, other species of animals are getting it and they're passing it back and forth. And it builds up what we call a reservoir of uh, COVID infectious uh, variants uh, and they feed on themselves. Just like when we stopped dealing with COVID, if, you know, and we have stopped a lot of our tools that were very successful with COVID. Uh, our masking and our social distancing are certainly not what they were at the beginning of last year. Uh, and this allows COVID to stick around. And if COVID sticks around, whether it's in a human population or an animal population, uh, it's going to grow. It's not going to go away. And it's going to come back to reinfect people. And that's one of our big problems with, uh, with COVID is that uh, our vaccinations, and we'll get to that, I think, with the next slide, if you can bring that up. Okay. Oh, this is this is you can see two B, uh, because I needed to to acquaint you with the term zoonotic, uh, which is a, which is an interesting term. But basically, that means that uh, we not only can give uh, uh, COVID to animals, and but they can give it to us, and vice versa. So again, uh, it's not only humans passing COVID back and forth to each other, and animals passing COVID back and forth to each other. But across species, animals are passing it to us, and we're passing it to them. Uh, and again, the problem is that COVID builds. And you can see from that second thing, that second reason for concern is animals are having a tough time because of those increased problems that they are facing just like we are. Climate change, deforestation, and mass livestock farming. All these contribute to massive weather problems and global problems that cause us to get sicker. And that's one of the reasons why we've seen a big spike in flu and we've seen a big spike in respiratory diseases, that RSV. Uh, and that's why we're calling it a, a triple pandemic now, because we're cautioning people to take care of themselves by dealing with and getting protection against not only COVID, but flu and this RSV, the uh, the respiratory system, because they're really wrecking havoc here. Um, so with all those things that we're talking about, the deforestation, the climate change, et cetera, uh, that's causing all these problems to stick around. And if we don't attend to them in an aggressive way, they get worse and they come back with us with a vengeance. Uh, that regeneration, uh, brings us to that problem of vaccination. And I think that should be our next slide so we can come up with that. Okay, 
you can see, we're concerned because there must be a highly effective vaccine that offers lifelong protection, where we can get one shot and we can say, wow, I'm done. No more, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm taken care of with this disease and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you take a look at that concern, uh, while the COVID vaccines help us to prevent very severe cases of COVID, uh, and that's cases that wind up being lethal and people dying from COVID. And you saw that in the statistics of how our deaths have gone down this past year, which is a great uh, positive. But the problem is that they offer little protection against reinfection. And uh, if we get a, uh, say we get a booster, and hopefully you've got, uh, you're one of the people that have got boosters, uh, the recent boosters that take care of Omicron variants, uh, beta five and beta four. Those should last you around six months, but after six months, right now you're gonna need another booster because that wears off. Uh, and we're liable to get reinfected. And that's what we're seeing a lot with people. And we think that we're safe. We think, wow, I've been vaccinated or I've had actually had a case of COVID. Uh, and once you have a case, of course, the antibiotics in your own system build up to deal with that. Or if you've got vaccinations, that helps your antibiotics uh, deal up with, antibodies deal up with. Uh, and we're good to go for a while, but they wear off. They wear off. We have not got that one golden vaccine that will take us away from all these problems. Uh, and we're acting like we have because we are much less boosted than we are vaccinated. We have less than half uh, of the, less than half of us that had vaccinations have followed up and got their boosters. And you need to do that because these wear off. You don't wanna have to go through this again. If you haven't gotten COVID, ask some of your friends who've had COVID and ask them if they ever wanna go through that again. And I doubt that any of them will say, Oh yeah, no problem. You know, uh, you know, well, if I get reinfected, no big deal. Well, what the people who have gotten reinfected will tell these people is that just because you had a light case the first time around doesn't mean you're going to have a light case this time around. And being short of those antibodies that your system has in it uh, is going to make you very vulnerable. So these are one things that we really, really have to attend to. Now, the other thing is, uh, like I said at the beginning of the program, we are less masks. There are less people wearing masks, and there are more people who are not social distancing, getting in big crowds, susceptible themselves to, uh, uh, you know, getting infected, uh, and uh, trying to uh, deal with spreaders. Uh, that's that's a major problem. Let's take a look at uh, this from a sort of a different angle. Let's take a look at, uh, we'll start off with medically, because that's the one that we're really looking at with uh, COVID. That's what we've been focused on. Uh, how do we deal with that in this next year to make sure that all these problems and concerns uh, don't come to fruition? But one of the things, as you can see at that top part, is to move quickly on lockdown. If there's a new wave coming in and you see that new wave from the statistics, and believe me, it's a wave because in this country, especially, it seems to come from east to west. So if people on the east coast have got a spike in COVID, if you're in the Midwest and then later in the west, you can sort of say, well, it's coming our way. So be prepared for this and be very vigilant about this. Uh, so immediately uh, go to those lockdowns. The other thing, as you can see from the bottom, is that we have to really test for these emerging diseases. And not only COVID again, but things like flu and RSV and uh, other diseases. Uh, so you can get them uh, to isolate as soon as possible. One of the real interesting things that happened to us at the beginning of COVID, that first, uh, when we got the vaccines and we started masking, uh, especially the masking part, I think was very helpful and the staying away from large crowds. Uh, other problems went down. Our incidence of flu 
just decreased because we weren't spreading our disease, not only for COVID, but we weren't spreading it for the zoo, but, you know, and other viruses. Uh, so we had a respite from that. Now that we're no longer masking and keeping social distancing, uh, those are going to come back as well as COVID. And you have to protect yourself against them as well. And masking is a great way to do it. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but let's go to the sociological uh, view of it. Next slide. Okay, if you're a sociologist, what you really want to do is uh, to talk about a global community. Uh, you want to really drive home the thing to everybody that we're no longer isolated. Uh, we're not only, you know, if there's a war that breaks out, if there's uh, a disease uh, like the pandemic that breaks out, if there's other major factors that are causing other major problems to people. Uh, in the past, we could say, well, we're not there. You know, we're not close to those people. Uh, it's none of our business. Uh, we don't have to worry about us, you know, and frankly, uh, they'll have to deal with it themselves. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, as the war in Ukraine uh, has really driven home to us, this is a concern, a global concern, uh, not only for the people in Ukraine, but the people uh, everywhere else that are worried about uh, these type of um well, this type of war is spreading to other people in other countries. Um, and none of us are safe anymore. Uh, we have to understand that we are part of this global community. And that's what the sociologists are going to be working with to try to help us to connect with that community. And we've been unconnected with that lockdown and isolation. Uh, we've had less chance to interact with our community, uh, our town, our state our you know our culture uh all of that we've had less a chance to do so that's been very difficult and it's caused problems for us and it's been sort of difficult to get back into that uh okay let's go to the uh because we're running a little short on time let's go to the psychological slide we need to move away from thinking just of ourselves now the sociologists are already on this about let's getting to the global community but we have to do it personally as well if we just think about how to protect ourselves uh, and we're not worried about other people, and frankly, we just don't care about other people, we're only so caring so much about ourselves and our immediate family that we don't do things to help other people. Uh, you need to do this. You need to understand, like that bottom line says, that to understand what affects others affects all of us um, that if we're having problems uh, like china is having problems right now uh, this is not going to stay isolated to china this is going to come to us um, and it's going to come to everybody unless we work together we work together as people uh, and as the sociologist said as countries and cultures etc but especially individuals and that's where we can make the most difference we may not be able to change uh, our world position, our world problems, but we can certainly help other people that are close to us. We can help our neighbors. We can help people in our communities that are in need of help. And if we help them and they get better and less susceptible to COVID, then it's gonna help us because we're gonna be less susceptible to COVID. These are the mindsets that we really have to go through. Uh, my last slide, I'll uh, go to uh, our Nobel Prize laureate in literature, Bob Dylan. And uh, <clears throat> I can't sing it to you because I'm a terrible singer. And we can't really play a recording of it for copyright problems. But that's not needed because I think most everybody who's watching this show can sing this song without any accompaniment. We know these lyrics so well especially those last two lines. Yes, and how many deaths will it take until we know that too many people have died? Um, I can't say it better than that. Um, and I think we can do this. I know we can do this. 
but we have to, it's not an easy road to travel. 2023 will be, I'm optimistic, much better than 2022, but we still have a long road to go and it's a hard road. So stay with this. Uh, in the future uh, sessions that we're gonna be having, I'm gonna continue on with my work with uh, finding joy in life. Even while that dark cloud is lingering over us, there are ways to not only find joy in our life, but to be effective in our jobs and in helping other people and in doing what we want to do uh, to become the people that we want to become. This can happen. So to all of you out there, thank you for joining in on this. Thank you for staying with this on coronavirus. Uh, like I said, from here on in, we'll have sort of a short update, but we'll be focusing mostly for the rest of the year on things that will make us happy and things that will make other people happy. So I hope that you will join us for all that. Uh, thanks for coming with us. Thanks also to the Think Tech Hawaii staff, uh, Jay and Haley and Eric and Michael and everybody. And, and again, thank you for listening. Aloha and Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.